Wow, good job. Thank you and good morning. Happy Father's Day to all you dads. Glad you are here today. Glad you're joining us online. It's a great day to be together and to worship God. Uh, it's it's wonderful. I, I want to just uh, back up a minute to say that I have really come to anticipate and appreciate the prayers that Reggie prays for us. Just very thoughtful and very well, and it helps me connecting with God. I'm not a big fan of the shorts and the shoes, but, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that just goes with it, right? So uh, glad, glad that he did that, and uh, I'll try to sort of uh, balance out for the Cowboy Church kind of look today. So anyway, thanks, Reggie, so, so very, very much for that. It's awesome to have you here. Oh, kids' cowboy joke. You know, you know they say that lawyers can be disbarred, and ministers, pastors can be defrocked. So someone would say that perhaps musicians can be denoted and electricians can be delighted and cowboys can be deranged. Ha ha, there we go. Well, hey, this morning we are going to look in God's Word in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. If you were around, you actually weren't here, I guarantee you, because I was here uh, uh, and it was back in the COVID thing. But if you watched this online, we were in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 on Mother's Day, where the Apostle Paul said, Christian leadership is like a mother, he said. And uh, he says, nurturing, comforting, self-sacrificing love. And we talked about those kinds of virtues. So we're going to fast forward just a few verses in that same passage today. And he says, good leadership is like a father. And we're going to unpack that with the grace of God. Now, I, I, just want to, I just want to give this setup to say, this is an amazingly important message. I'm hoping and praying that I don't mess it up, that I don't get in the way because the message is so profoundly important. Here's what I would say to you, every one of you in this room, certainly including dads and maybe especially dads, but everyone in this room, if you get your head wrapped around it, that is if you understand it. If you get your heart wrapped around it, that is if you really believe it and you really buy into it. And if you get your hands and your lips wrapped around it, that is you actually do it and say it. This will profoundly change your life for the better. It's that big a deal. I mean profoundly change your life for the better. Obviously, it's Father's Day, and obviously this pas passage references that. And so obviously, I am going to talk about dads quite a bit. But, but let's extrapolate that out. This is huge for grandparents. It is awesome for moms. It is great for husbands. It's great for wives. It's great for employers. It's great for foremen. It's great for any. It's great. Awesome for teachers and coaches. Oh, wow. It's good for horse trainers. So let's giddy up. Let's go. Let's look at the scripture passage together. It is from First Thessalonians and it is chapter two and verses 11 and 12. Here's the Apostle Paul saying, for you know that we dealt with each other as a father deals with his own children encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. So next slide, we're going to see that the three big things he says a good leader leads with, in this case, he's using the analogy of a father, is encouraging, comforting, and urging. Let's look at those three words in a minute. Encouraging, I'm going to spend most of today on that concept. So we'll, we'll unpack that. And I think we kind of know what that means. We'll see. Comforting. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time, but we, we understand that, 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 that is to give comfort, empathy, sympathy, etc. and urging that word comes from a Greek word. And it's difficult to find one English word that exactly matches it, but it's an in your face word. It's a confrontational word. It's a it's urging, it's, it's a rebuke, reproof, it's a strong word about that. And he's saying, I was among you in my leadership like a father, encouraging, comforting, and urging. One of the things that we need to understand about Scripture is that unless the Bible specifically says otherwise, the Bible always lists things in order of priority. So first is first. 
Now, I'm going to tell you a personal story about this while you look at that. And, and, and <laughs> you, can, you can laugh at me. It's quite okay. Um, uh, I re- had read this, I'm sure, but the first time I really came to grips and encountered this passage of Scripture, uh, I was already had uh, three young children, very young, young boys at the time, and I was reading it. Uh, just one morning in my reading through, and I came through and understood this priority that he says a father leads with encouraging, comforting, and urging. My first thought to that, I'll tell you in advance, wasn't a good one, but my first thought was, that's upside down. Now, I've got to tell you this, by the way, just as a, as a provision. When you are reading Scripture, which is God's Word, and you say that's upside down, that's not your brightest move. <laughs> Right? I mean, I just, let's just lead with that, okay? That's not your best thought you're going to have all day. Um, and, and, and so the odds are really high that God's not upside down. But, but I'm just saying, that was my first reaction. And, and let, me, let me explain myself. Because I looked at that and said, I don't, I don't think that's dad's, because my dad wasn't that way. Now, I'm going to be a little careful about this, not to throw my dad under the bus too much. And my dad was a really good man in most ways. And he was a star at urging confrontation. I'm talking world class here. I'm talking Olympic gold here. I don't think I've ever met anybody in, as good as the urging confrontation. And he led with it. That was number one on his list. He was real good. He was big. He was loud. He observed all kinds of things. He was quite articulate. And, uh, oh, wow, he was good at urging. You get the point? And (laughs) some of you had a dad like that. Some of you have a dad like that. And, 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 oh, wow, he was good. I have to say, he was decent at comforting. Now, not in my mom's league, of course. She was the quintessential earlier thing. You know, I mean, as a kid, if something went bad and dad and mom were there, who thinks of dad? Uh, you know, you just right straight to mom. She was awesome. And, but, but he was okay, you know, if, if you had to. He was, he was not bad at comforting for a while. He was lousy at encouraging. Never in my whole life do I ever remember my dad telling me that he was proud of me or that he thought I did something really, really well. Never happened. Some of you know my dad who never knew my dad. You had a dad. Wow. And so I said to this passage, that's upside down. And then, boy, I hate to admit this out loud, but did I mention I was, a, I was a current, when, I, when I engaged with this, I was parent of three small sons. And it occurred to me as God began to unfilter me a little bit to say, huh, I'm kind of a lot like that too. I hated that about my dad. And guess what? I'm a little better than he was, but I'm kind of that way too. I tend to lead with urging confrontation. And as it turns out, I'm pretty good at that. I mean, I learned from the best. And I paid attention. And I'm halfway decent at comforting. And I'm better at encouraging than my dad was. But, boy, I'm not that good. And I sure don't lead with it. Hello? Are you with me? Are you listening to dads? By the way, there are moms that could hear this too. Just, just, for, the, just for the record. I'm just saying So the more God began just working with me in this passage, the more I came to say, guess who's upside down? It's not God. In fact, I remember just saying out loud to God, well, one of us is upside down. And uh, who has the better track record here? Huh? (laughs) So, bummer. I'm upside down. And I need to, by, by the way, by the way, this is, a, this is a side road. If you read the word of God and hear the word of God, you will have this happen to you every once in a while. You will have to say every once in a while, one of us is wrong. <laughs> huh, I wonder who that would be. And if you're humble enough to recognize it's not God. I got to shape up here. I need to, 
reevaluate some things, reshape some things. Well, well that, that's what happened to me. And, and I started working at it. I started saying, man, I, got, I just got to get better at this. I, I got to pick this up. I got to lead with this. I got to, I got to be encouraging and comforting. So I'm going to fast forward a few months So after that. And I was actually feeling fairly good about myself until this happened. I, I, I've seen it now in lots of, lots of different places. But the first person I heard it from was Dr. James Dobson, who said that it takes five compliments, affirmations, encouragements to equal one criticism. Oh, that's a bad day of my life. <laughs> See, I was up to a one-to-one -one ratio and feeling actually pretty good about myself because this was a major improvement. You, you with me? And now I'm here and I got to go to a five-to-one ratio? You, we've already established that my first thoughts are often not great, right, right? Here was my first thought. My boys don't do that many good things. <laughs> that was my first thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, but that's just the way that was. And, and, and then I started thinking more and, and, and finally came up with these kinds of conclusions is, A, if I'm going to get to this five to one ratio thing, I've got to let some stuff slide. Ooh, that's not good. But I've got to pick and choose. There's some stuff that just doesn't matter, as it turns out. See, this is one of the advantages, by the way, in being a, a grandparent instead of a parent. You figure it out by now, whatever. They'll get over it in a couple of years, and I can wait it out. <laughs> I'm good. It's cool. It's all right, see. As a parent, you think you've got to fix it. You know, I've got to fix this now, or this ch child's run for life. As a grandparent, you say, nah, they'll not grow up. They'll be good. <laughs> so, so it helps you with that kind of perspective. But I'm just saying... I had to acknowledge as a parent, I just got to let some of this stuff slide. Now, my sons probably would, might disagree with that, but I'd let stuff slide. The other thing, though, that was more profound than that, I had to say, I've got to really start paying attention to the stuff they do well, and I've got to start verbalizing that, which means say it out loud, and I've got to build up coins in the bank. If, it, if, if I have to have $5 in the bank before I spend $1, oh boy, I better start making deposits. I've got, got to put money in the bank. Does, does that make sense to you? By the way, are you, are you catching on? This is more than just about parenting. If you're a teacher, if you're a coach, if you're an influencer, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, if you're a grandparent, what, it's still the 5 to 1 ratio just works. And so I started saying, wow. I got to do better than that. Now, now, I'll just be honest. I didn't always achieve five to one. But let's be honest, neither did my sons. <laughs> okay. I mean, they, I mean, they had days when they weren't five to one either. So, you know, you just got to. But, but I just started working at it saying, I got to get better at this. I, I, I got I to gotta build up reserves. I've got to start affirming and encouraging and expressing that. I've got to start noticing. I've got to do this. Well, I just got to get a lot better at this. You understand, when you look at this, this makes absolute perfect sense. You, you, you understand if you lead with urging, confronting, oftentimes, if that's your lead thing, oftentimes you shut the door to ever comforting or ever encouraging someone. You just will never get there. Hello? But if you lead with encouraging, almost everybody likes that. See, even the people who tell you they don't need it, they need it. Even the people, you know, tough old cowboys that say, oh, I don't care what anybody thinks. Oh, yeah, we do. You sure we do. Absolutely we do. We all need it. We all need encouragement. We all love encouragement. We love for somebody to give us hope. We love for somebody to tell us that, that something we did was, was done well. Amen? You see what I'm saying? Did you, did you notice this morning I led with Reggie and said how good his prayers and stuff were before I got to the shorts thing? You, you, you noticed that, right? <laughs> See, so that's an exact, it's a good example. See, there was, there was encouragement, Reggie. You do a good job praying. If you just dress, dress better, that'd be good. But I just, I just say, say, I can't, I can't resist the urging, but, but I'll lead with encouragement. See, you, you see what I'm saying? I just tried to model that. See, so, but because I encouraged him, see, then he thinks the short thing is funny. I, I think he thinks that. See, see, but if I led with that, then I might never, he might never hear the other. Does that make sense to you? So see, this makes, by the way, God's really bright. Like he really is smart. 
He really makes sense. And he says, lead with encouragement. I got to tell you, that's true on your, in your workplace, in your classroom, in your, your team you're on, in your family. I got to tell you, that's really true. Lead with encouragement. It's awesome because we also know, we also know the old adage, horse trainers know this, that what, what gets rewarded gets repeated. John Lyons taught me something about this that was really helpful to me. Because I knew early on, that, for instance, I'll just use this model. You know, we, we don't like horses that are high-headed. We want to put a halter bridle on and, and a horse, especially a tall horse, stick his head way up there. And some of you who are height challenged have a difficulty reaching that. And so you want a horse to know how to lower his head to stick it in a halter bridle. That, that's, that's the object, right? So, so the idea is that you put pressure on the top of that horse's pole, top of their head, and, and when they bring it down, then you can, they yield, when, when, when you release pressure, that's a reward. That's an encouragement. You did the right thing. John Lyons taught me this, because my, my deal is, I put pressure on there until they bring their head way down here to where I want it. He said, put pressure on that until they drop it an inch and then take the pressure off. Reward them for an increment. Reward them for a little bit. Then you can put pressure on them to drop it another inch. And before long, when you put your hand up there, they'll drop it all the way down. But, but when they're moving in the right direction, see, every parent needs to learn that. Look at direction more than you look at accomplishment. Every, every person who's needing to influence and direct others. See, we, we expect everybody to get someplace in one giant step, and it just doesn't work out well. Hello? You don't do that either, by the way, often. And God's patient with you, saying, let's look at direction. You look through Scripture, and you understand God is pleased with people who are moving in the right direction, not necessarily waiting till they get to the end result. Does that, does that make sense? So what gets rewarded gets repeated and a reward direction in the right direction. Reward that and, and, and watch God bless for that. So we've established that. Now, let, let, me, go to a, let me go to a how-to. So, so we're going to come to a slide that, that talks to us about how, and there's two big things, and I want to talk to you again about a personal story. So in the how-to thing, uh, uh, let me just say that, that since my late 20s, Every year, I try to, around the first of the year, I try to have a day alone with God, usually in the mountains, if I can help it, if I can get there. And, and uh, oftentimes, it's just a little, little pocket New Testament and a little uh, pad and pen and just hang out with God for almost a whole day, worshiping Him, praising Him. But the purpose of that day is to listen to Him to say, what would you like for me to have as goals for this year? And specifically, what area of my life do you want to grow me to be more Christ-like? What area of my life do you want to help me to change so that I can be more like you? And I've been doing this for a ton of years, and he still has projects. (laughs) That's the interesting thing. So I may live to be 150 before he runs out of projects. I don't know. Uh, uh, But I'm just saying, he, he, he has projects. So let me... Let me tell you about this journey, for instance, to illustrate this. So a number of years ago, I was actually at that point uh, pastoring a a large church in Gillette, and uh, I was uh, up in the Big Horns, a day alone with God, and God began just to whisper to me and just impress on me that my goal for that year was to become a more encouraging person. Not, not just in parenting, but in all of life, just to become a more encouraging person, a more encouraging leader. And that just resonated with my spirit, and we walked, talked through that today. I read scriptures about it, including this scripture, and wrote down some things. And so let, let me just say then that I set that as a year-long goal, that that would be my priority of spiritual growth that year, was that by the grace of God, I would become a more encouraging person. So one of the things that meant for me is that I would pray every day, God, help me to become a more encouraging person. God, just help me. And God just began, you know, people, I mean, I'd have magazines where the whole, the whole magazine theme was around becoming an encouraging person. <laughs> yeah, nice, very funny. Uh, um, uh, you know, glad you worked it out. And, and uh, you know, I'd pick up stuff and stuff would jump out at me from scripture and other people would say things. I'd, I'd hang out with people that I thought were very encouragers and just listen to them and watch them and observe them and say, how do they do that? 
uh, what, what, what goes on in their life and pray every day. And I had prayer partners that I would ask to say, would you pray with me that God would help me to become a more encouraging person? So I would just say to you, start with prayer. Never underestimate the power of God to change you through prayer. I'm not going to spend all morning on this. In fact, I'm going to say it and just run. But things you think can't change about you, God can do that. God can do that. Ask him. It's real simple. Ask him. But then write out specific goals and strategies. And so I wrote out, by the grace of God, I will become a more encouraging person and began to write out how would I know that and how, how would that take shape in my life and where would that try and do. And one of the things that God sort of impressed on me that first year was to say that for that year, every day for that year, I should encourage my wife Esther out loud every day. And frankly, I thought that would be a piece of cake. I actually thought that was maybe the easiest project God had ever given me. Because, like, I've never been one of those guys who can't say words like, I love you out loud. I had told her that several times. (laughs) If you think that's funny, just wait. So I thought I was actually pretty good at this. But my goal was to say for one solid year, every day, I will affirm, compliment, encourage Esther out loud every day. I thought it'd be easy. And it started off that way. First day I said to her, wow, your hair really looks nice today. And, uh, yep, got a day. Second day, that outfit looks terrific on you. That's hot. Second day. By the way, guys, uh, uh, some of you should be taking notes. Because this is more than you've got. Third day, I said, uh, wow, you're a great cook. And that's when it dawned on me that I'm going to have to come up with some new material. Because that's pretty much all I got. Now, I've always known Esther is awesome and amazing and, and, and love her, and she's terrific. And, and I mean every word of that. She's, she's, she's awesome and amazing. But when it comes to, like, saying stuff out loud, and it occurred to me, you know, she's pretty bright. And um, if I just recycle these three for a year, I'm betting she'll catch on. Oh, boy. I got a problem here. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. And so, again, I, I thought through this, and God helped me with this. And it dawned on me, and, and I'm going to give, like, three, three or four points here. And, uh, ladies, um, I, I highly respect you and regard you and think you're brilliant and all like that. Please, please understand that. I don't think you can get what I'm about to say next. I just don't think you can understand it, because, but guys will. So, ladies, just listen and try to be aware this is who we are, and don't try to understand it, because I don't think you can. We'll see. Because, guys, listen to me. Tune in. What I realized, if I'm going to affirm my wife every day out loud for a year, number one, I have to notice stuff. So you ladies are saying, duh, you've never been a guy. I'm just telling you. We kind of know it's out there, but to like notice it, see. Then I have to put that into words like a sentence. (sighs) Even for a guy who who speaks in public for a living, (sighs) that doesn't automatically transfer to home, see. Put it, put it, and, and, and wait for it, wait for it. Here it is. Then I have to say it out loud where she can hear it. <sighs> now, see, ladies, you think that's a piece of cake. Guys, that's not a piece of cake. You got to notice it. You got to put it into a sentence, and you got to actually articulate it. Say it out loud. Oh, boy. <sighs> And I had figured out in three days, guess what? I, as it turns out, I had not been doing that. Oh, it was a great year. Oh, it was a good year. It changed our relationship. It changed our relationship. That's been a lot of years ago. It changed our relationship. 
I, I habitually notice more and articulate more, and so does she. You know, Jesus says, if you want something, give it away. So, by the way, ladies, did you know your husband's like this, too? You know that guy who, who tend, pretends to be tough and everything because he thinks he's supposed to be tough and everything? He loves it when you give him a compliment. He loves it. He may just grunt when you do that. Don't be, don't be put off by that. He may not change expressions when you do that. I'll guarantee you a week later, he can quote it word for word. Guarantee you. It means a lot to him. In fact, you being proud of him and respecting him means more to him than anything else in the world probably. That's how big a deal that is. Hello? Did, did, did you know, dads, that your kids, this matters to them? Like, really matters to them. Your spouse, this really matters to them. Did you know, grandparents, this is huge. It's one of your huge assets to say, say this. It's, it's amazing to say this. Did you know, coaches, teachers, you know, anybody. By the way, did you know that if you're over 20, some kid that's 12 thinks you're an authority on everything pretty much. So it matters to them, see? You just brag on a kid, I guarantee you can't waste that. It's amazing. So I've already told Jackson and Briska and Keaton and Lathan and other people that they, I, I was proud of them for making the honor roll. I'll bet they remember that. See, that's a big deal. You, you, you with me? So, so that was my first project. Next year I was back on the mountain and God gave me another project, but he also gave me part two of this same project, which was... That year, he says, I want you to especially express appreciation to the people who serve you. Like waitresses and waiters, people who work in gas stations, people who are cashiers, that kind of jobs. Are you with me? I, I go out to eat uh, with people. I used to, part of my job, go out to eat lots with, with, with people. And, and a lot of times we would actually, you know, say grace over our... Our meal, but I was embarrassed to do that at times because they treated a waitress or a waiter like they were a slave. Barely, barely, not even courteous. And I, and I thought I'd always been kind of decent, but God helped me to step it up. Now I tip okay, well, not extravagantly, but tip okay. But just just simple things. This is not complex. Just say please and thank you. Every time somebody fills your water glass or gives you something, look at them and say thank you. If, if they do a, a decent job, tell them at the end, you do your job well. Thanks so much. You know, it's preposterous that people would wait on you, right? I mean, who in the world do you think you are? Somebody would serve you. Come on. Come on. Somebody die and make you King Tut? Come on. Somebody brings you water. Right? So you better pay them, but you better be nice to them so they don't spit in that water. But I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, people who serve us deserve courtesy and respect. Hello? And I began doing that, and oh my goodness, the reward is amazing to me. See, I'm not extravagant. I mean, if you got to eat with me, I won't embarrass you by like, like you know, I don't spend hours talking about how nice a waitress is. But, but I'll be polite and nice, and I go back, they remember me. I get great service. And sometimes if, if I'm like saying grace or stuff, they'll come back with me after a while and say, so you're like my pastor now. And I'll give you, they want to give me prayer requests. And it opens the doors because I led with encouragement before I say, you know, I've been out of water for three minutes here. I, I, you, you lead with encouragement. You get to, so, so that was my second year. My third year was awesome. It was so much fun. God just impressed on me that for the third year, my project of learning to be an encouraging person was that I should encourage five kids, 12 and under, every week for that year. I should just affirm and encourage five kids, 12 and under, for that year. Now, again, at this point, I was pastoring a rather large church, and, you know, we'd have a 1,000 people plus or whatever on a lot of weekends, and, and, and so we had children's pastors and youth pastors, and mostly I worked with adults and, and leaders and, and, frankly, just didn't hang out with little kids a lot. So I knew, okay, i got to work at this. So I asked uh, 
secretaries and especially school teachers. Uh, I had to ask a couple of retired school teachers who I know read absolutely everything in the newspaper to say, if you see, if you catch any kid 12 and under doing anything good, let me know. I want to know. Give me, feed me. I, I, I want to know because I want to. I want to affirm them. I want to do something. And I started paying attention, and I start just walking up to kids, and and I just start saying, oh wow, hey man, nice shirt. I really that's that's cool. I, that, that looks really good today. And and then just strike up a conversation, and uh, uh, you know, I, I'd I'd see them playing basketball, and that was a good game, good job. And I saw you, I saw you really d that person up over there. That that was really good. And and just started affirming those kids, 12 and under. And and I and I thought they were liking it okay, but I wonder, you you know, because I was like in my 40s or something by then, and and. And, you know, kids 12 and under, if you're over, say, 30, you're old. Uh, doesn't, doesn't matter whether you're 33 or 78. Doesn't matter. You're old. Uh, uh, so I'm just thinking, so these kids, really, what are they Are they thinking? Oh, this old guy, is he a little creepy? Uh, you know, what, what's going on here? Uh, you know, you never know. And, and I was just wondering if, if, if that was resonating at all, if that was doing anything. And, and so I was into it several weeks, and... and uh, I noticed one Sunday, we had multiple services. After our last service, we were out in a, in a lobby area that's close to this size, uh, and, and there was a circle of adults there. I'm going to guess about 15 adults, and we were just standing around talking. And, and then I noticed out of the corner of my eye something and started paying attention that around this circle of adults was a circle of kids, 12 and under, just standing there. And I thought, well, that's weird. Kids don't do this. I mean, they've been in church and stuff, and it's a nice day, and the last thing they want to do is just hang out and listen to a bunch of adults talk about boring stuff. What are they doing? Ah, they're waiting for me to affirm them. That's what they're doing. Way cool. So I just backed out of this group of adults and started going around saying, hey, and reminding them of something I'd talked about. You did awesome on that spelling. Are you still doing that? When you got another thing coming up. You did great at volleyball. You did, you know, hey, you did, and just started one or the other, and I'd watch them grow by two to three inches. I'd spend about two, three minutes with each of them, pew, and then they'd take off. Yep, they got their affirmation fix. Hmm. Part, of it, part of me, it broke my heart a little because I'm thinking, they're not getting enough of that at home. They're not getting enough of that in school. They're not getting enough of that other places. They're so hungry for it that they're willing to put up with being bored for a while just to get some of this. That's a big price for a kid. Hello? But part of me was like, thank you, God, for giving me this. Wow. That is so cool. I've, I, I, I've, I've tried to keep that up. I've tried to say, wow, that's a really, really big deal to affirm. See, some of you, see, some of you go with this to say, yeah, well, n- nobody cares whether I do that or not. Uh-uh. Lots of people would care. Lots of people would care. There are lots of people in our culture today who are starving to death for encouragement. Lead with it. Lead with it. It'll let you get to comfort. It'll let you to get to the other place. So, I'm going to wrap up, believe it or not. But I'm going to encourage you to do something with this. Every dad, I want to encourage you today to uh, text or call or however it is you connect and let your kids know that you love them, you're proud of them, and it's an honor to be their dad. Moms, I know it's not Mother's Day, but it's not too late. They'd like to hear from you too. Bosses, teachers, coaches, people, If you know one other person, that person needs encouraged. i got to tell you that. And so I want to wrap up and model this a little bit. I'm privileged today to have my son. One of my sons in the the audience. He's our oldest son, Wes. I've got a couple of sons who may look at this on on video at some point. I don't know. Uh, So what I'm going to say to you, Wes, pretty much goes for them. Uh, you're, You're different guys, but... First of all, we don't say stuff about each other in public very much. Uh, so I'm going to break that rule today and just embarrass you. Uh, 
that's just tough. Um, but uh, I'm proud of you, like really proud of you. I love you. I'm proud of you. You're a godly man. You're a good man. You're a godly leader. You're highly effective. You're a good dad. There's just a lot of stuff you're just amazing at. And I just want you to know, uh, I've done a couple of things that people think are successful, but to me, the thing I'm most proud of in life is being the dad of Wes and Nathan and Levi and say, wow, it's an honor to be your dad. I am so proud of that. I have people come up to me every once in a while and say, you must be proud of your sons. And I'll say, absolutely I am. I just want to make sure I say it to you. Pray with me, will you? Father, you tell us, actually your model is that we start our prayers with our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. You're our Father. Now we understand that some people struggle with that imagery because their father was lousy. And sometimes human fathers really mess up. And we have a hard time transferring that concept of father to a perfect heavenly father. And none of us had a perfect human father, but all of us can have a perfect heavenly father. So today, God, for those of us who had fathers who were mostly good, we want to honor and respect them and tell you thanks. And we want you, God, to be our father. And we honor you for that. Now, God, it's certain that you lead with encouragement. You didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And you lead us with encouragement. Oh, yeah, you, you, you provide lots of comfort. And you do confront us when we need it. But you lead with encouragement. Help us, God, to receive that today. Help us to pass it along. Dads and moms and grandmas and grandpas and kids, help each of us, God, to understand that if we lead with encouragement, you will just bless us and open doors and relationships in an amazing way. So God, if we're not used to this, it's a struggle to get started. But help us to get started. Help us to take that step. Help us, God, like pulling a horse's head down. If we, if we move an inch in that direction, smile on us. And then help us to move another inch. And pretty soon we'll be sticking our heads in a halter. Help us, God, to move in the right direction. Help us to learn to be people of encouragement and to lead with it. We pray this in the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Pastor Tom, you have anything? God give you a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy Father's Day. Tom wants you to hear that God loves you (laughs) and that he loves you. And I kind of like you.